Welcome to the Wildlife Tax Valuation Workshop. My name is Trent Tynert. Today I'm going to be speaking with you on the history, requirements, and application process for the Wildlife Tax Valuation. We will begin with the history. Open space agricultural appraisals are improperly referred to as exemptions. If you have this valuation, you are not exempt from paying taxes. However, you are being taxed at an often reduced rate. The two main valuations we will be covering today are under the 1D1 appraisal and are, and are traditional agricultural use and wildlife use. Prior to 1995, the primary valuation for the open space land was traditional agricultural use. After Proposition 11 was approved in 1995, it allowed properties with agricultural appraisals to manage for wildlife and maintain their 1D1 open space valuation. So what does the wildlife tax valuation do for you? It allows you to obtain an open space agricultural appraisal 1D1 for wildlife management practices. And it allows you to maintain the same tax rates you had with agricultural use and it helps you manage for wildlife. Property taxes in Texas are set two ways, fair market value and production value. Fair market value is the price your property would sell for under normal market conditions. An example would be residential homes, where production value is an estimate of the land's capacity to produce agricultural products. So what is the value of being taxed off of production value versus fair market value? Big savings for you. Next, the requirements. To obtain a wildlife tax valuation, you must currently have a 1D1 open space agricultural appraisal for livestock, forage production, or farming, or a 1D1 timberland. If your current appraisal is a 1D agricultural use appraisal, you cannot transfer to a wildlife tax valuation. If you currently have a 1D1 ag valuation, you can roll your property into the wildlife valuation. However, a minimum acreage requirement may exist. If a track of land was reduced in size during the tax year prior to applying for conversion to a wildlife tax valu valuation, it needs to meet the minimum acreage requirements. This minimum varies by county and the state average is 16.6 .6 acres. Check with your appraisal district if your property was reduced in size the prior tax year. When applying for the wildlife tax valuation, the primary use of the property must be wildlife management such that the tract of land is actively being managed to sustain a breeding, migrating, or wintering population of indigenous wildlife. The indigenous wildlife population must be produced for human use, including food, medicine, or recreation. The property can be managed for secondary uses. An example would be grazing. Secondary uses cannot interfere with wildlife management practices, and they cannot be detrimental to the wildlife species being targeted for management. For example, if you're managing for bobwhite quail, haying a pasture would be detrimental to the quail population on the property and would not be compatible. Next, the application process. Your first step is to identify a target species and identify management practices that benefit that species. The practices you select should benefit the targeted indigenous wildlife species and be relevant to your property. For example, you would not want to manage for bighorn sheep in the coastal prairies of Texas. Next, you will need to identify management practices to manage for the species you're interested in. These activities must fulfill at least three of the seven categories, habitat management, erosion control, predator control, providing supplemental water, providing supplemental food, providing shelter, and performing census counts or surveys. You may identify multiple practices in each category, but you are only required to complete three out of the seven categories. Management practices must comply with set rules published in the Com Comprehensive Wildlife Management Planning Guidelines for your region found on Texas Parks and Wildlife's website. To determine which practices to use, focus on practices which you are passionate about and ones you know you can complete each year. We will be available after the workshop to answer any specific property questions.
The next step is to complete a wildlife management plan that describes the goals of the property owners, the species being managed for, and the wildlife management practices that are planned to be implemented. After the workshop, we can answer specific questions about your wildlife management plan. The next step in the application process is to fill out Form 50-129 and return it to your tax office. You must submit your wildlife tax valuation plan to your county appraisal district by April 30th of the year in which you wish to qualify. The last step is to implement your management practices as described in your plan. Remember, you need to complete at least three out of seven categories by December 31st of that year. We typically recommend including four or five practices in your plan so that you have a backup in case you are not able to complete one of your practices. And of course, enjoy your property. Remember, a requirement of the wildlife tax valuation is that the property must be used for human use, including recreation. You can find a lot of good information on our website. Just visit Texas Parks and Wildlife's webpage and look at the land section and under land you'll see private lands. On the next page, look at agricultural tax appraisal based on wildlife management. And that will take you to our main website for the wildlife tax valuation. There you can find frequently asked questions, guidelines, you can find links to the actual tax code, lots of good information on this web page. You can also find a map of the state of Texas showing which county falls into which ecoregion so you know which guidelines to follow. As well as the comprehensive guidelines for each ecoregion, you'll also find wildlife management plans and the annual reports that are downloadable in either PDF or Word form and are fillable so you can fill them out on your computer and return them to your tax office. Thank you.